are you, everyone? We're so happy to be here on our, our 12th episode. Oh, my God. Wow. Yes, this is so exciting. Hi, everyone. I'm Ana Galena. I am a floral designer. And my favorite part is sharing with you tips and tricks so flower arranging can be an easy thing for you to do. Good morning and afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. We are back with episode 12 to talk to you again about flowers to educate and inspire. I am Dion Woods, owner and artist of the Turquoise Iris. Um, I paint flowers because they never die and they are my absolute favorite thing to paint. And today we have someone special with us here in the middle of this screen. <laughs> Holly, tell everybody who you are. Hello, flower friends. Good morning. I'm Holly Capelli. I'm just a mom, a bit of a backyard farmer, urban gardener, um, and I'm here to talk all things flowers with you. Oh, we're so happy you're here with us, Holly. And we have Kara watching us from summer camp. She cannot be with here today <laughs> on the screen, but she is with us at heart. <laughs> You guys, we are going to show my favorite video, my favorite song. So prepare to dance. Let's do this thing. God, I love the intro. It, it just sets the mood <laughs> for us to have the best show ever. Thank you, everyone who's commenting. You know, we love to read your comments. We're here paying attention. This is an interactive show. That's why it's live. So please ask us anything. Let us know what you're thinking, how you are. Hola, Adriana. Hola, Fer. I like to th say hello to all my Mexican Spanish speaking friends <laughs> and hello everyone you guys i <laughs> want to let you know that if the connection is bad i'm going to ask for forgiveness because i'm at the beach but i did not want to miss out on today's show i wanted to hang out with holly and anna and all of you as well so if i freeze up just 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 know that we're all just hanging in there and that's what you get when you have live television right uh, but i want to talk really quickly for those of you that watched last week's show raise your hand in the comments because it was really powerful episode raise your hand put them up there guys um we had two really inspiring First off, I have to tell you, when I was looking at Ace's images online, I loved hearing about his floral beard. I didn't know floral beards were a thing. Anybody else know that floral beard was a thing? When no. Anna, when I was seeing his photographs, I thought he was holding something. It never occurred to me that he had just like made himself part of the artwork. I had no idea. And, and since then, I have connected with Robin all week. She and I have been going back and forth. And she, what a lovely person. I'm ready to get my hands on that book of hers. Aren't you? No, completely. I mean, I was not on the show live, but I was behind the scenes before the show and after the show. So I got to speak with Ace and well, he is amazing, really. I can't wait for him to be on the show and show us how to do the beard. Why don't we show them a clip about last week? Let's do it. Make anything into a, you know, you can pop anything in, and I just have one thing here that I have. Oops. I brought like this is just you've seen this like yes oh. like flower sifter yeah. like a vintage thing that you know if you're doing like a vintage table to just like take a plant and uh -huh. pop it pop it in <laughs> you know uh -huh. it's inside in its own container but it's it's hidden in here and these things because they have the screen underneath the water can just kind of go through and drain oh, right out um, but I love using anything. Right making almost anything into a, a vessel for flowers live boldly live unapologetically okay yes be, say it again say it again be, <laughs> and be an artist like be your <laughs> artist of who you are like you might not be for everyone but mm -hmm. you are for someone yes yeah and um 
you will always have a family. You will always have a seat at the table, no matter what. Like, there's enough room for all of us. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing that I've kind of started really positioning and talking about is that it should be community over competition. A lot of what I do in the fall sets my garden up for the next year. It sets me up for what is blooming next spring. And so awesome. right now I am ordering seeds that I need to be planting in the fall. I'm gonna paint and together, so- I bring them up front. Okay. We paint together, we paint on canvas, we paint on furniture, and then I literally just give everything away that we work on that day. It's a, uh-huh. it's an opportunity for community. It's an opportunity for all of us to kind of connect. And I so love the connections that. we're getting. I mean, last show was so inspiring. I'm also following Robin. I read Kara in the comments that she says she is, She's taking Robin's advice and she had a baby shower last week and she took some extra flowers. I mean, that's the whole idea. We want to inspire you and we want to create this community where we connect, where we have fun. Oh, I love that you're here, Holly. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and I love seeing those clips. I love a good repurpose project and seeing um, all the different things you can use as a planter. It's got me going. Now I'm thinking I have a lot more planners than I had this morning. (laughs) (laughs) Now, you guys that are just popping on, if you're new here, we are, uh, we're hosts. Holly is our guest host this week while Kara Jameson is um, at summer camp, I believe. Um, We also have videos on Bloom TV Network where you can actually go and learn from each one of us, but we have well over a hundred other experts that are teaching us all about what you can do with flowers. We would love for you to take this opportunity to share this video, please. But along the way, if you don't really understand what Bloom TV is or how to access it, please ask your questions here in the comments. Um, We have Monica behind the scenes. Also, we have others on helping us. So we're all here for you to answer your questions and make sure that you really get the best out of Bloom TV Network possible. Completely. And I want to take this opportunity to let, because I see a lot of Spanish speaking viewers, I want to remind you that we have a lot of videos in Spanish. Bloom TV has decided to launch Bloom TV in Espanol. I'll say this really fast in Spanish. Suscríbanse al canal, está precioso. Tenemos más de 50 videos para ustedes y seguimos creciendo. Cada vez va a haber más. Bloom TV is a must. Because the main purpose of Bloom TV is that we want to share beauty. There's a lot of problems going on. There's a lot of terror stories. We want to bring to you beauty. We want to inspire you because if you think about it, in reality, there's more beauty in life than bad things. But we always focus on the bad, on what's going on wrong. So if we focus on the beauty of life, I guarantee you're going to be way more happier. And it's nice to have a quick reminder of that sometimes because we get kind of stuck in a zone. And so our goal is to be this happy place for you every single Friday where we can kind of redirect you, um, give you a carefree hour of fun and friends. Megan has a question over here and she says, how do I access Bloom TV? Great question. We have a graphic we're going to put on the screen here. And what we really, if you can go to bloomtvnetwork.com, you can click watch, you can sign up for our newsletters. We have um, the Flowers and Friends, if you want to watch our replay that we've done every single week. This is our 12th episode. And brand new, Anna, tell them all about this exciting new thing that (laughs) we just found out about today. Yeah, this is incredible. We have a gift for all of you. You can subscribe free to Bloom TV for one month. I mean, once you're there, you're going to love it and you're going to want to stay there forever. You only have to use the code flowers and that will give you access for one month. Isn't this the best news? I love it. I'm so excited about that. And I think that, you know, the variety of videos that you'll find on Boom will be really surprising to some people. I mean, the way that you can use flowers, there are videos on here um, showcasing ways that we can use them that I I had no idea about. Absolutely. You guys, make sure you are sharing this video. I'm always here to remind. And also, 
if you recall a couple of weeks ago, I'm still looking for your projects where you repurposed your vase and painted. Make sure you tag me, tag Bloom TV, tag Flowers and Friends, and we will share your projects on social media. We want to involve you as much as possible. So um, today we are actually going to talk about letting florals be your guide. So it's really interesting how florals I think it's interesting to me, Anna and Holly, how florals have become such a dominant part of your life, your business, and really just your daily activity. Holly, you have some flowers there sitting next to you. And I know that your cabinets are stockpiled <laughs> of flowers. Like, it's really impressive. Tell us a little bit more about that, Holly. Um, yeah, well, I, I find my sanity and my peace in my garden. And all the things that come from that, all of the projects that I do are kind of all part of that refueling for me. Um, so I, I do find flowers in a vase to be incredibly beautiful, but I often look at them like, oh, I could, I could use that in this, or I should, it's sad that they're just in water. Um, so I love to press them. I love to dry them. I love to infuse oils with them. I love to create new things with them. Um, so yeah, my collections stack up about this time of year. Um, well, I try to fill my, fill my cup and fill my jars. Absolutely. And I'm excited for your segment here in just a few minutes. I was thinking I'm on vacation right now with my family, everybody. And I was trying to think what really drives me to want to paint flowers or to talk about flowers because one of my earliest memories of just being a couple a married person it didn't matter if we had $25 in our bank account Matt and I were going to the garden center and we were going to buy flowers and mulch and make sure because it was always just been something that I felt really makes a house a home and then I got to thinking about Ladies, how do you think in the history of florals, why do you think it is that roses signify love? Or you know how certain flowers have a certain meaning or you understand when you give somebody daffodils. I mean, you're, you're giving away a bowl full of joy. Like it's a, so isn't it interesting? Like, I don't know, you guys, can you think of some flowers that kind of have a message attached to them as well as roses or daffodils or peonies or tulips to me are spring. They come out in the spring. So it makes me think summer is coming and I, it's something that I look forward to. What other flowers can you ladies think of that actually have a message attached to the, to the flower? For me is chrysanthemums. To me, they represent fall, even though you can find them yes. all year long. <laughs> but to me, it's like um, all the terracotta, mustard color ones, all those fall colors, especially because I live in a city where we don't get the change of colors in the seasons. We never get the trees changing colors. So moms, whenever I bring them into my home, it's like, fall is here so I love them <laughs> for me I uh I love calendula and to me it speaks of healing I see that as a as a healing flower um, not only just in the garden it protects my other plants um, defending them from insects but um, you can create so many beautiful things with it. It's a, it's a joyful flower. It comes in a lot of varieties and different colors. You cannot look at it and not be happy about it. And its uses um, are just endless. You know, the sunflowers that we were focused on a couple of weeks ago, we found out so much about sunflowers and I had no idea I found a lot about why so many of the paintings were about sunflowers and that it symbolized, you know, more of a casual feel, but yet they're so big and so dramatic. And I would love for the audience, whoever's watching, what is your favorite flower? Um, we would love for you to put in the comments. Irma says her different flowers of roses have different meanings. Yellow is for friends and Kara says daffodils so symbolize happiness bright and cheerful. And I think that's it. When those daffodils pop out of the ground, because she has 7,000 daffodils at Kara's farm. <laughs> I know that's crazy. <laughs> well, that's incredible. I, that's, that's magical. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, I mean, I was just kind of thinking about like lilies also. You see a lot of wedding bouquets with lilies in it. And, and it, I know there's trends, what's on trend with comes up, but I feel like the sentimental flower goes back to lilies. 
I think I had calla lilies in my wedding as well. And if I recall correctly, I believe my grandma telling me that sometime, perhaps back in the depression area, that putting a calla lily at your front door symbolized that they, uh, there was a loss and the family. Oh. Um, so I think that lilies might have something connected to death. <laughs> but I got married with them, so. <laughs> <laughs> and things are still okay. <laughs> I got married later. with them too, Holly. That was my point. I, I'm like, well, I had lilies in my bouquet. And so, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but that's, I think it's interesting the way a flower actually sends a message. I, I think that that's so interesting. And it could have been just, in tradition, what was available or what was blooming in season, whereas she says she loves irises and orchids and, and uh, Renata loves hydrangea. I just think it's really interesting that a flower symbolizes something else because not only are they beautiful and make such a beautiful impact on us, but they also have a meaning attached. Yeah. Um, well, and most recently, guys, I have to tell you my news and it just, I keep yes. thinking about all the things that are exciting going on. And we just launched our summer issue of the Turquoise Iris Journal magazine. Oh my gosh, there it is. Look, you guys. So we have published issue eight. It is a digital version. We have Wendy Conklin of Chair Whimsy on the cover. And there she is on the right there. You see that image? She's standing at her greenhouse, you all. And she has plants in abundance inside that thing. Not only that, but next door, she has her art studio where she covers all of her chairs. And we've taken this opportunity to feature 12 different creatives inside the magazine and really um, give them an additional platform to share their work. Uh, we have our very own Kara in this issue this summer. We also have Magnolia's Yard in coming. So um, I look forward to Holly and Anna having you guys in there coming Yay. up really soon. Um, but I will also tell you, if you are the lover of a paper magazine, which I am as well, I love a paper magazine. This is our Where Women Create, where Bloom is featured. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that with Holly here in a few minutes. But um, we have our What Women Create out as well. Um, and on newsstands. So you're going to want to pick that up. But because I am a lover of paper magazines, I'm going to go ahead and move the journal to a print version in October. So I hope you all celebrate with me because you're going to get so tired of me talking about it. You really, really no, are. That is, those are wonderful news. That is amazing. Congratulations. That is a huge um, milestone, you say it? I mean, it's I, an accomplishment. Oh, congratulations. And also congratulations on today getting your summer issue out. That's great. Thank you. It's our issue eight, which it's actually been two years now since I announced it. In, in the middle of the pandemic, I announced a digital magazine. Here we go. You know, here's something new. Um, and I honestly, I thought that the paper version would be out. Like everything has moved so digital. But my, you know, my genre, everybody that, that loves what we love, they're still saying paper is the way to go. And so I've listened and that's actually what our October, our fall issue, we have a focus word for each issue. The word is listen. And I'm, I'm saying, okay, I have listened to what your needs are. I'm going to continue to put beautiful, talented, creative artists and creatives inside the magazine and we're going to get it printed. And that will be celebrating our two year anniversary to actually launch the, the wow. digital. And so... And thank you for listening because it is better to have a printed copy of a book, of a magazine. The experience is completely different. I mean, it's going to be great. And I want to take this moment because you ask what their favorite flowers were. And we have yes. sunflowers, violets, hydrangeas, irises, orchids. We have down here, uh, 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 I read more. We have, oh. Peonies. I love peonies, yes. Orchids. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys, thank you for saying you love paper copies. We really do too. Um, it's just scary. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just being honest with you. It is scary to um to jump into something like that. Um, but I have so much faith in our contributors that we have featured every single issue. And what's happened is I'll flip through the digital pages and I just I am blown away. We have some ladies on here who have all been featured in the magazine. Um, I'm blown away at their contributions. I'm blown away at their doing new things because on the back page of our digital version, there's a QR code. 
and our subscribers can click that. And we have tutorials that are free that are included. We have our contributors have done videos, paint tutorials um, where they've added videos. So that's kind of included in your membership. And we'll continue that forward with the paper version. Oh, wow. We have I'm a really excited for you. I'm really excited for you, Dion, for doing this. You are such an inspiration. And I know that this print version is really going to touch a lot of people because you're passionate about um, about showing other people's passion and sharing their art. And that is so sincere. And so I cannot wait to flip through the pages and smell them all. <laughs> Something about a, the smell of a new magazine. I am just thrilled <laughs> for you. Thank you. You're making me tear up because I'm like, okay, I don't want to talk about me anymore. I get all like, <laughs> no, no, back no. to flowers, back to flowers. <laughs> there is a great question here in the audience. Someone asked, and I, and I think this is a great dynamic. Dion, if you were a flower, what kind would you be? I could pick Ooh. anyone? Yes. <laughs> okay. I feel like I would want to be... Okay, I don't know if I could be just one flower, but if I had to pick one, I would say a peony, and I'll tell you why. But I think I'd rather be a little bit of this and a little bit of that and just be a bouquet, a bouquet. Like, <laughs> I love it. You know, because some days you have those days where you feel um, a little bit more confident, a little bit like a little, I'll be red today. But then there's other days you want to be a soft, rosy pink, and you want to be a little bit more subdued. So that's such a nice question, but I think I'd rather be just a, a bouquet, but maybe a peony would a peony would be the main flower. I think that they're comforting. I think that they grow in abundance, and I think if if I could translate what that would mean, a peonies what they mean are um, they really do make people smile. They they really do bring a lot of joy because of the the intricate. There's so many layers to it, and I feel like with all of us ladies. There's so many layers to us, you know, and it's, sometimes it's harder to peel them back a little bit harder than other days to peel them back. But um, yeah, I'm going to go with peony or a full bouquet. How about you, Anna, Holly? You have to take the same question. Yeah, well, it's funny yes. that you say that about peeling back because it's sort of what I was thinking. I I can relate with the artichoke flower, the artichoke. It's a little prickly but a little pretty, a little, a, and very social. The bees love it, right? But there are many layers to an artichoke. And um, yeah, and it, you have to be very patient before it gets, it blooms. <laughs> I feel like that's me. It's good. You gotta be a little patient. <laughs> yes, I'll is, get there. That is incredible. That, that's, that's beautiful. I will definitely be a tulip. And, and it's funny because a long time ago, somebody asked me, why do you love tulips so much? Because they have always been my favorite flower. And as I was describing the tulip, I noticed I was describing myself. So I love that tulips um, are free flowers. I mean, they move, they dance, they flow, they keep growing once you cut them. So I love that. And I think I'm pretty much like that. I love to move. I don't like like strict rules and i love that about tulips you cannot force them to do whatever you want them they will do <laughs> whatever they want so i love that and i love that they keep growing and growing and growing and also it's funny because a lot of people sometimes are like oh tulips are fragile or tulips are hard to work with but once you get to know them they are a wonderful flower to work with because they they let you design with them. So I love tulips and I would be a tulip. That's beautiful answer. That's we beautiful. would just be the prettiest fun bouquet, wouldn't we? Yeah. And Kara, well, I love, Kara says she would be a hellebore because it gets more beautiful with age. <laughs> oh, I love that, Kara. We miss you, but we're glad you're here with us. We feel you. I love that. Um, let's do Holly tell us before we get started with your segment tell us what is it about nature that really calls you to it mm. Mm. well I've always been called to nature I mean just as a little girl but for me like when I need to catch my breath and regroup it 
I go outside, I immediately head outdoors. I need to stand under a tree, uh, feel the breeze. It's just, a, I don't know what it is. There's an unspoken connection between myself and nature. And I just really, I vibe it so much. I feel like it, it gets me. Um, and I can just walk through the garden, pick things here and there, see how things are growing. And by the time I get back into the house, I am ready to go again. I am refueled. Um, so I lean on nature a lot to literally get me through my day-to-day -day stuff. Um, just like you and your husband, my husband and I have always been green thumbs. Even when we didn't have our own house, we would go over to my parents' house and do their landscaping because we just wanted to get dirty. Oh, I love um, it. <laughs> and I also love shopping the nursery, you know, um, but as we, as our family grew and, and our budget got tighter, I realized, you know, how many flowers I could grow with a pack of $2 seeds um, and really kind of started my journey there, really started to connect. And as the kids got bigger, I realized I really need to be growing, you know, my own food and as much of it as I possibly can, because it's so expensive um, and now even more so. So um, I really, my connection is really about family and um, my mental health, if you will. No, I get that. And tell everybody why your grocery bill is probably pretty expensive. Oh, well, we have six <laughs> kids, my husband and I. We're high school sweethearts. We've been oh. together for a little over 30 years now, I think. Um, and we have six kids. They range in age 26 to 11. We have two sets of twins. Three girls, three boys. And if you have even one boy, you know <laughs> that they eat you out of house and home. So, um, yeah. It, and, and, you know, regular shelf food, canned food, that's inexpensive. But produce um, is very expensive. And so I we immediately put in blueberry bushes. We immediately started growing raspberries. You know, all the things we knew the kids would eat. And, of course, you know, I would say... The kitchen is closed, stay out of there. There's no snacks available. And then you'd see all these little feet out in the garden. Just somebody's in the blueberries, somebody's eating peas and they're quietly snacking. Oh, I, I just loved it. Oh, I that, love that. That sounds incredible. Wow. Wow. That's yes, so it's definitely been, it, you know, when the kids were younger, they were really involved in the garden, very proud to grow their own food. And I honestly, I don't think they would have eaten as many vegetables as they did had they not been able to grow them themselves and see it and feel this sense of, you know, satisfaction and reward by doing it. So um, it was so wonderful having a living classroom as they grew up. But now they're bigger and they've got other things going on. And so my husband and I really are back in the garden by ourselves most of the time, which is equally fabulous. Were you inspired by your own childhood? Was this something that were your your parents and your husband's yeah. parents actually taught you? Did, did you guys grow your own when you were young too? Um. Not like consistently. I've, I've always been a city girl, but my, my grandparents, they had a beautiful garden, a vegetable garden. They had a stately rose garden that actually my husband and I were married in. Um, oh, wow. And that was just incredibly inspiring to all my cousins mm -hmm. and every, our grandma at four foot nothing was <laughs> everything to us. Um, everything she did was gold. And so I'm not the only one. All my cousins are, you know, incredibly talented. My aunt is a true farmer uh, with lots of animals and everything. And so, you know, I think she is our, our main inspiration. But also as a child, you know, my dad is a huge green thumb. He has a beautiful greenhouse right now full of uh -huh. amazing things. And, and they mm -hmm. had gardens and did their own landscaping and were very talented at it. So, yeah, I've had lots of inspiration. Um, and my husband and I just couldn't wait to get our own yard and get stuff going. That, that sounds incredible. You've inspired me. You and Kara have inspired me. Like I'm starting to grow flowers and it's always been my dream to also grow my, have my own vegetable garden. And looking through your Instagram, it's like so filled with color. And I always go like the bases you have behind you. And I'm like, I want to eat like that. I want that to be my life. I would really love to know about, I've seen in your last Instagram post that you're drying flowers. Um, yes. Why? <laughs> Tell us about that. 
<laughs> I'm drawing flowers like crazy woman and I love it. Um, again, I people are like, well, what do you do with them? Well, this is what I do with them. This is part of it. This is part of the journey itself is, is, is why I do it. So being able to go out into the garden with a beautiful bowl, gather whatever flowers are available that day. And I mainly grow edible flowers. So most of what I have dried are edible um, with a few exceptions. Uh, so I go, I gather my flowers. I love to leave them outside. Once I gather them, I put them under my covered porch, let the bugs scurry. They are in there hiding. Um, so just give them a few minutes to get on out of there, find a new place to live. Before I bring them in the house, then <laughs> I toss all my flowers into a colander and I give them a really good shake. Just one last chance for any bugs that didn't want to run for the hills before. Okay. Um, Cause I really don't want to bring anybody in the house that I don't have to. Uh, after that, <laughs> I bring them in the house and I rinse. And of course it depends on, you know, what the flower, what, what I'm doing with it. But for the most part, um, I like to rinse anything that I'm going to eat or later create beauty products with. So I give them a really quick light rinse under some cool water. And I put them on my counter on paper towels just to air dry for a little bit. Once I do that, I set them on window screens. Window screens. This is. Yes. Show us, please. Okay. Wait. Okay. So this is where they dry out after you. This, them. Yes. This is okay. what they dry on. This is a $5 window screen from your hardware store. Okay. And if you don't have time to do that, you probably have one on your window already. <laughs> Just rip it off. And then um, that's what I did when I first figured that out. I used all of our screens. My husband was like, what happened to the window screens? <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, so you can use these and I put them on a utility shelf. A utility shelf is just like a, a plastic shelf that has slats on the shelving. So I'm getting total airflow between the screens and the shelving. Mm -hmm. I place my flowers like, for example, here I have some calendula that oh, I prepared this morning. And I stick it on my screens upside down. I try to spread out the flower if needed. And I stick it upside down. That'll help it to keep its shape. Um, then it'll dry for about a week. You know, it really depends on humidity, temperature. I mean, there's a lot of different factors on how long it will take. So it could be anywhere from a couple of days to maybe two weeks. Once I think they're actually dry, I let them sit there for like two, three more days just to be certain. Um, and then I'll start to jar them up. And when I do that, for the first two weeks, I will open the jars every day uh, for about 10 minutes, maybe shake up my flowers, just let them breathe for a minute. This really okay. helps them acclimate into the jar. If you open the jar the next day and you're feeling like your flowers maybe are a little moist, dump them back out on your screen and let them finish drying. They weren't done. That's okay. how you get molded. Hours. I have to ask this question because I was yeah. seeing your, your blooms are upside down on your drying rack yes. and you go out there every morning and how do you determine, so you're not waiting for them to dry. Here's the, here's the hard part. I think I would have trouble with you're cutting them while they're blooming. So they're not, they're still blooming, but you're cutting them. So like, you don't wait for them to die on the, on the plant. No, I don't wait for them to yeah, dry like, naturally. No, no. Yeah, that's a great question, though. I mean, because a lot of flowers can dry naturally. I mean, roses dry right there on the. But once they've been in sun, you know, probably those are full of bugs. Those would be harder to wash once they're dried already. Um, and then also the sun tends to brown your flowers. It can also zap the mm -hmm. uh, scent right out of it. So we really want to dry them out of direct sunlight. If you're not able to do like an indoor setup like I have okay. where it's on shelves and drying naturally, you certainly can use a dehydrator on really low. I believe it's 125 Fahrenheit or something. It should say on your dehydrator um, the proper temp for flowers and herbs. You can do that. You can okay. also set them outside just out of the sun and then bring them in at night so that they don't get affected by the morning dew. Here's a great question. Do edible flowers have flavor? Yes, they do. <laughs> some of them taste great and some of them are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so good, Holly. 
not. No, it just depends. They all have different flavors. Um, my my favorite edible flower is if you're just getting into the edible flower world, um, I suggest just starting out with pansies or violas. They're very friendly. They're um, a very mild taste, so you can add them to anything and it won't ruin your dish. Ooh, like you know. This. Yeah, unlike That's lavender, so if you put lavender in everything, it's going to be lavender, whatever you're cooking. So um, that that one is very overpowering. But um, pansies are very sweet and subtle. You can use them fresh. You can use them dried. I happen to have some here. Do you have a favorite flower that you dry? What's your favorite? I think it's my, I think it's the the pansies, the pansies actually. Well, and the calendula because I can make so many things out of it. But pansies also make lovely like salve and oil. And I don't know if you can see this. Higher, a little, oh, there, a little higher. No, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> we'll get there. It's perfect, right there. So, <laughs> what are <these> flowers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are so cute. And if you don't want them to shrivel up, I get a lot of people like, oh, I, dry I dried my pansies and they shriveled all up. Well, that's what they do if you're drying them naturally. They're great to add in like tea blends because they give that little extra um, pretty and then they don't kill your taste of whatever it is. You can put them in the these little fancy bags, um, sachets for your drawer or under your pillow or um, oh, yeah. you can add bath salts with those in it and then stick this in, in your tub so that the loose dried petals don't get everywhere in your tub and, and then go down your drain, stick it in the little sachet. Is this um, a family so thing? Does your family help you with this too? Do you, did the kids get involved in this? Oh, they used to, they used to a lot, um, but not so much anymore. And I, I mean, really, again, this is, I do this for my sanity. I work full time all day. When I leave, when I close my laptop, I head immediately outside to the garden and just refill my soul with, with these kinds of projects and, and gathering up the stuff. And then the kids really jump in now when I'm all done. That's they love to make the salves with me and lotions and create and melt the beeswax and add the flowers. So when we're when we're doing recipes and stuff, I, I get more helpers. Can we go to the last picture production, please? <laughs> because I believe those were Christmas ornaments, right? Yeah. So a lot of people ask me, what do you do with your dried flowers? Um, and I, I cook with them. I, I make beauty products with them and I craft with them. And here's one of the things that I made last year. Um, it's got the, the very top. Those were artichoke silks. And um, so just whatever you collect, nature is so beautiful. Just the randoms, the things you think are garbage and the, the silks and the, and the artichokes after they've dried up are beautiful. I filled them full. I filled a lot of glass ornaments full of those and um, they look stunning next to the lights on the tree. So, and then also I did the pansies as well. And if you don't, like I was saying, if you don't want them crinkled up, then press them. And when you press a pansy. Aww. So pretty and delicate, but yet it holds so a lot of like color. It's like paper thin. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I did the same with some roses so that you could see. Oh, that's so lovely. Holly, and I love an interesting we question. It's in Spanish, so I'll translate it. They're asking, mm -hmm. uh, do you need to store them in crystal or glass bases or can they be stored in plastic? They can be stored in an airtight plastic bag. The, the key is we just want to eliminate any possible uh, moisture that could get into your container that you're storing it in. I just prefer glass jars because I like to look at them all the time. <laughs> but if you don't have space for that, um, definitely a plastic sealable bag will work. And actually it works great with the calendula because in a, in a jar, these tend to fall apart. Um, okay. So if you do it in a plastic bag, you can lay them flat and then stack them. And then you have beautiful little flowers. That's an excellent tip. Thank you for that. Before we move on to Anna's segment, will you tell everybody what's coming up with your What Women Create video, please? please. Well, I'm actually not sure. It's all <laughs> a surprise. It's still in the works, but I'm I'm so excited to be a part of this new collaboration between Bloom TV Network and What Women Create. I don't know if you've seen this magazine, friends, but it's stunningly beautiful. Like the kind where you want to cut the pages out and frame them and hang them on your wall. That kind of beautiful. Um, so when I got the call that they wanted to 
do a feature on me, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> you know who I am, right? <laughs> me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I am thrilled. It's, it's totally out of my comfort zone. It's really new. It was really fun to have a production crew here. And all I had to do was stand where they tell me to stand. And do it. it was so fun. So um, I'm thrilled to see it all. I can't wait to see it put together. Well, uh, no doubt there's going to be tears coming from you. Oh, and it's going to be sure. something. But the, you know what? We often don't see ourselves the way other people do. And it's no surprise to me. I've had 12 weeks of just being able to share a little bit here and there with you through our Bloom TV expert experience. Um, but you are rocking it on social media. You are giving away your giftings and you are encouraging others. You make them laugh. You bring such joy. So we're not at all surprised that you are going to be featured on this, my friend. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. This is, it's kind of You're just welcome. been a whirlwind of, um, of joy. So <laughs> no complaints here. No complaints here. Well, Anna, what are you up to today, young lady? Well, I'm going to show you how to do a flower arrangement with dahlias. Let me change the light. Oh, because dahlias. dahlias are in bloom in the summer and everyone loves dahlias. But there's something even better about dahlias that I love so much. It's that they tend to be even harder to work with than tulips. And this is why, <laughs> because you cannot force them to do anything you want. They have their own shape. So you need to pay attention to the shape of the stem and to how the flower head is. I mean, this is standing straight. You cannot wire it. You cannot move it. You have to work with the flower. And I love doing that. That is probably one of the reasons I love doing flower arrangements the most because I connect with the flowers and I need, and they are the ones guiding most of my flower arrangements. So for this arrangement, it's gonna, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to work with your dahlias, to have fun, to actually let flowers guide you and to practice letting nature tell you what to do because there's no other way with dahlias. You need to let them <laughs> do their magic and you just follow their their orders. I'm so, glad you told us that, Anna, because I've never worked with dahlias and I've tried to paint them and I have painted them a few times, but I've never, I don't think I've ever actually had any in an arrangement that I've played with before. So thank you for the heads up that they are in charge and I should just sit back and let them be, them, be their grand self. <laughs> totally. Because, and a lot of people actually don't like uh, working, uh, arranging dahlias because of that. Because, you know, a lot of people wants to like lead the way, tell their flowers what they're supposed to be doing. But with dahlias, you cannot do that. Not at all. Um, I have some, ho um, some holly <laughs> in your honor. No, this is from my garden. <laughs> so... First, I like a round base because this helps you flow with your flower arrangements. It has some chicken wire in it. Can you see it? Well, yep. there you see it. it's a yes. ball of chicken wire. I didn't put any tape to secure it because, because of the form of the base, it won't come off. But if you have a different base, you need to make sure your, your wire won't come off because if it does, your whole flower arrangement will break into pieces. I like our holly because it moves, it flows, it is, it's just yeah. dancing. I love, I love that it has, I love a trailing. I think I, I think a bouquet that has little trailing stems like your holly there is really more interesting. I love that look, really beautiful. I love the deep green too, Anna. Uh-huh, and what I'm doing right now, it's just, Making the shape, my arrangement is going to go flowing to the sides. So mm -hmm. I'm putting some foliage to my stems. Even though I have the chicken wire, they will hold in place and they will not move. That's so important. I know a lot of people use um, pin frogs. And yes, they help you so the flowers will stick and stay in their places. 
but I'd rather use foliage and chicken wire because most of the time pin frogs are kind of expensive. So this is another alternative and not everyone has access to, to pin frogs. So I'm just playing again. I'm letting my... It's already colleagues. gorgeous, by the way. It's already yeah. a masterpiece. I, I have like five places in my house I'd put it. <laughs> Absolutely. Holly, do you only do flowers or do you also dry large leaves like this? Um, I'm taking a pressing class this summer, so I am expanding okay. my knowledge of pressing leaves. So right now I really, I don't, I just do edible herbs and edible flowers is my main okay. focus. Okay. Great. Well, After I love you have your foliage and try to find a foliage that is really loose. You can also work with spring that I that's how you say it. Can you correct me? Spring garai? Spring I think it sounds perfect the way you said it. Because okay, because it's know. so we, the <laughs> mocha fern, anything like that will work well. I'm going to add some carnations. Why? Because the carnations will bring contrast, will be like, will give movement also to my arrangement. So I like to put okay. my carnations like close to the vase. That way also it's creating, it's putting all my stems together at the bottom. I'm trying to insert them like this, cross. Okay. So when I stick my dahlias, they will stay in place. So I do a little, I, I play a little bit. I, I try to put them like in, in groups of three and try to work in different depths. Yes, that's how you say it. So always something that's so important when you're working um, in water and with floral foam, without floral foam, is that you need to measure the your stems before actually cutting them. You cannot be like, okay, I think this is the right height, and I'm gonna put it. No, it's important that. You are you trying to? Are you trying to call me out on this, Anna? You just called me out, like. <laughs> I'm not a measurer. I'm not. I was so thinking I'm the gonna, same thing. <laughs> she just called me. Up. I'm like, how does she know that I just hold it up and go? <laughs> <laughs> then I mean, if you cut it, if you if it ends up being taller than you want to, you can always cut it more, like I just did right now. But if it end up okay. ends up being too short, there's nothing you can do. So. I always, I always tell everyone that it's important to measure. Once you get practice, I mean, your site already knows what the height is. You don't need to measure because I don't know, like magic happens or I call it like that. It's magic. I like it. But I like that. I like that when magic happens. That's so good. Now, Holly, I know that you dry. Do you do arranging like what Anna does a little bit here? Do you enjoy that? I never, ever do it. I enjoy watching them do it i'm really learning a lot and it's inspiring but i see the vase and i think of all the things i could do with the stuff in the vase <laughs> I <can. laughs> so I, I love to look at them but i i never do that i love okay, that no. so now that i i feel comfortable with what i have you probably cannot see the carnations that much but there they are we so. can it's beautiful Really, beautiful. carnations yeah. symbolize love. By the way, they are the official flower of Mother's Day. Oh, wow. really? Okay. So now I need to look at my stems, and I need to be like, okay, what form you have? I need to look at my arrangement. That is crucial. You always need to look to see, okay, where would you go? Where would you look the prettiest? And what's it saying to you? Yes. What I'm saying to you right now. I want to be there. But because also, you see, the stem is kind of curvy. So I'm going to take advantage of the curve right there. I cut and I insert it. Okay. So it said it wanted to be there because they're the yes. boss. And you are, are just the facilitating boss. their plan. I love this flower. It's a show off flower. Um, is there a reason why you chose this shade today? Or are you just like this was nearby at the, you know, what you what you chose? Is this? Okay, right now they are in full bloom here um, where okay. I live in okay. Baja California in Mexico. 
And these are local dahlias. And I went to get flowers this week and they had like thousands of dahlias. And I was like, oh my God, I want them all. And I actually bought like 60 dahlias. I went crazy. So I made an arrangement for my mom. I made an arrangement for my sister. I made arrangements for everyone. And this color is kind of trendy. They call it Cafe Alate. Okay. So yesterday, my wholesaler called me and he told me, Anna, I got you Cafe Alate dahlias. Do you want them for the show? And I was like, yes, thank you. Yes. So it was mostly him who offered them. I love that. And um, Holly and I are going to wait for our arrangement in the mail, sis. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer um, will dahlias be in season, Anna? Right here in Baja California, they are in season. They told me, I actually asked. They will be in season until October. Oh, wow. That is exciting. I'm growing dahlias for the first time this year from seed. And they just they just popped oh. up. But they're, they're only like one, one layer of petals. Maybe that's because it's from seed. They're not and the showstoppers that you Kara are. Kara would be great at answering that. And she might in the comments, Kara, <laughs> you, you'll have the answer to Holly. And okay. look at this stem. Beautiful. I have it right here. And it's incredible. I, I grabbed it and it immediately moved to the side. It was like, I want to be in one of the sides. Don't put me standing. I want to be <laughs> in the side. So since I already have this one here, I'm going to put the other one on the other side. And this is going to be, a, um, uh, what's the word? Okay, so here it is. You can see it. That's beautiful. It reminds me of the old-fashioned pinwheels we had when we were little, like the little pinwheels that were on a stick and then it spun around. Do you guys know what I'm talking about with all the colors? No. Oh, um, they were like a, like a prize or something. It was a pinwheel. It was a toy and it would spin around. It looks just like that gorgeous flower. Yes. Um, Kara says we should do a whole show on dahlias. You know, we will Kara. That sounds wonderful. We should and Dahlia would be the best person for that. Yes. And here's one thing. I don't know, and, Dal and, K and Kara, you can answer this, but where I live, dahlias don't last a long time. Once you cut them, they last like three days the most. They will last three days in a flower arrangement. And I know a lot of people will not buy them because of that. And I'm always, for a really long time, it's something that I tell all my students or my all my viewers. It's like, give yourself... Uh, allow yourself to enjoy flowers for the time that they last. I mean, nothing lasts forever. So dahlias are a great practice to just enjoy the beauty in the moment and then learn to let go. So that's that. another reason why I love dahlias. Well, in the comments, people are commenting how beautiful your arrangement is. I am curious after the show, if you would be able to post um, your finished photo of your finished arrangement, maybe on our social media, um, yes. our yes. Instagram at flowers and friends on our Instagram, and then maybe they can see it there so they can see the full finished look of it. Cause it's I love that. I will. So just one last thing, give yourself permission to play with the alias. Do it. I mean, nobody's going to be judging you. You can just have fun. This is for yourself. So just have fun. See whatever happens. And just at the end, I'm going to tell you, even if we need to finish this, I'm going to add some jarrow that it's also okay. just like to fill in the gaps. Like I need some color and to add a different um, texture. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Holly knew that texture, lots of texture. Um, I wanted to remind everybody while she's finishing up there that the what women create collaboration with bloom TV can now be found on your newsstands. And those of you that are subscribers, they'll kind of be filtering into your mailbox. This is the where women create, but the what women create, I think we have a graphic, um, maybe with the What Women Create magazine that you can pick up. And I want to remind everybody about that because it's an absolute beautiful edition. We were talking about it a couple of times, but for those of you just popping on here at the end, um, just wanted to remind everybody about that. Um, Anna, 
Yeah, I am absolutely loving the direction that that is going. I want to remind everybody to follow our Instagram as well at Flowers and Friends. For those of you just popping on, we are on here every single Friday at 12 Central, 10 Pacific. Um, that makes it one Eastern. Look at me remembering my, I'm, I'm going all over the world here. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And why don't we also remind everyone, we have a beautiful gift for you. We are giving away one free month of Bloom TV for you to enjoy, for your family, for your friends, for everyone. Just go to bloomtvnetwork.com and you sign up and you use the code flowers and you will be able to enjoy the beauty of bloom tv free for one month i'm sure after that you will never want to stop being a subscriber no that's all it takes i think for people to understand all of the content right holly absolutely and when you're there on bloom tv um be sure to sign up for the weekly giveaway with the flowers and friends talk show Yay! Yeah, yes, and we have a giveaway where we're giving away something new to one of our viewers every single week, but you have to sign up right there, put in your email address. Now, this isn't this isn't make you um, subscribe to Bloom TV Network, but this gets you on our newsletter. This gets you signed up for the giveaway. Um, when we are, you know, we're new, and we want to share with as many people as possible, and so giveaways, they're fun. And we want to participate. I even want to send free paint to some of our viewers every single week. So get on that list. Get on the newsletter. We also send out emails every single week of what's going on, following up, what's coming up. We'll also let you know when Holly's new video is out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. I'm Thank you, everybody. We've got a little video that we're going to show here in just one minute. It's wrapping it up, thanking our sponsors, but don't go anywhere. We have one more thing for you after that. Yes. We have built the world's first flower focused streaming network bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation the flower. So beautiful. Uh, Everybody. Every time I see that. I know um, it's the it's the music that goes ooh. Yeah. It's like that. You're just like it just goes you right like into you. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, everybody at Bloom TV Network, thanks you for being here with us today and every single Friday. Yay, thank you so much. And we'd really lo love to thank Bloom TV for giving us this opportunity to have this talk show for you. As you all know, we're working so hard because we're trying to get into a studio. So you're, you being here with us, you recommending the show to your friends, your family, and everyone is helping us reach our goal. So thank you for being here. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being a part of Flowers and Friends talk show. Yes, because everything is better with Flowers and Friends. Yay.